Vanich. Well, for more reaction now, we are joined on the phone uh, by a Bosnian Serb who is a victim here. He was a refugee during the war in his country. Vladan Ivkovic joins us on the phone now uh, from New York. Mr. Ivkovic, thank you so much for agreeing to talk to us. I'd like to start by just asking you for your reaction uh, to the news that uh, Slobodan Milosevic is dead. Good morning, first. Uh, my first reaction is a sigh of relief. Uh, this may bring a closure to the whole process that a lot of Serbs consider a farce and uh, un unjust process. And uh, a lot of Serbs feel that Milosevic was treated unjustly because NATO countries are financing uh, major finances of uh, the Hague Tribunal and NATO countries bombed Serbia, so a lot of Serbs feel like uh, somebody who was your enemy in the past cannot, should not be able to try you for, for basically fighting them. So this may bring a sigh of relief to a lot of Serbs. History will judge Milosevic, history will judge those who try him. And, uh, but my first reaction when I woke up this morning and when I heard that he died was a uh, sigh of relief. And, and I think this will bring a closure to, to the whole situation and how with Milosevic individually. How do you feel about the fact that he is dying, though, before the tribunal could reach a verdict, before there was a pronouncement either way on, on his guilt or innocence? Uh, in, the, in, the world of, in the global opinion of Milosevic and of Serbs, he's been convicted already. And he's been treated as a, as a, as a war criminal before he, he was convicted uh, before the court. So when it comes to public opinion, I don't think this will change anything. They'll still treat him the same. But uh, uh, when it comes to legal implications, he's innocent until he's proven guilty. So I hope history will consider that, and I hope that people that analyze this now and 10 years, 20 years from now will know that he was never convicted. You know, we just had the Bosnian foreign minister on before talking to you, and I don't know if you were able to hear it now, but he, he, his point of view, or hear it then, but uh, his point of view is that this may be a jumping forward point. Now that he is dead, this may lead to better relations uh, among all of the, the, the countries of the former Yugoslavia moving forward. What do you think? I think it will. I think, I think the prime minister is right. Uh, he, Milosevic was a, was a big obstacle as long as he as, as long as he lived, uh, neighbors of Serbia that that Serbia and, and Serbs outside Serbia fought wars against considered him a villain. And uh, now that he's not around anymore, they can't really point fingers at him anymore. They can nobody can use him him as a reason to uh, to stop Serbia's improvement in many ways, reintegration in the in, in European uh, organizations and, and world organizations. So as, long as, as much as you can't say that somebody's death is a positive thing, mm. um, from a political standpoint, Milosevic's death will clear some, some ways for Serbia to reintegrate in Europe, to heal some wounds maybe with the neighbors, and, um, and will clear some ways from, from outsiders to, uh, to consider Serbia a different country. Although it, it's been a different country since Milosevic was removed. Sure. Still, they... they now they, they, they have to stop looking at Milosevic and then mentioning Milosevic as any kind of excuse or obstacle uh, for Serbia to, to move back where it belongs to Europe. You know, I think it surprises and galls some people that he still has his supporters in Serbia. I mean, the fact is he does. It's certainly not a majority, but they're there. Um, you know, in, in, in your mind, as someone who sees the conflict from, from your perspective and now clearly you're living in, in the United States. I mean, is there any doubt in your mind that Mr. Milosevic was responsible for, for massacres, for the deaths of, of thousands of people, and that he was at the pinnacle of that command and that, that he, he knowingly ordered it or was willing at least to stand by and watch it go on? He was, he was the president of a country, and the major ob obligation of a president of a country is to defend it in ways that he sees fit. And uh, while I personally think that Milosevic exaggerated many times in many ways, I think that he's at least as responsible as other leaders in the region, like Franja Tuđman, the, the former uh, president of Croatia, like Ali Izetbegovic, the former president of Bosnia, because 
uh, I, I think that Milosevic did not create the whole nationalism, and he did not uh, stir the emotions. He just wrote them because he was a basically a communist opportunist, and he saw he saw a momentum, and he just wrote it, and he became the leader of Serbs when Serbs needed one, when other ethnic groups in the country had had theirs. So Milosevic, as an as an opportunist, he became greatest nationalist overnight, and. Uh, Still, I would not say that he, he was the mastermind of, of the massacres. He was just the man in charge, and uh, he had to do what he what other, other presidents in the region did, too. I'm a victim of not Milosevic. I'm a victim of Bosnian government headed by Muslims and by Ali Begovic. And uh, to me, they, ma- they masterminded what happened to me. And, of course, Muslims and Croats in Bosnia and Croatia will blame Milosevic for master- masterminding what happened to them, but uh, there's always another side to the story. Yeah, Milosevic was in charge of of some very bad things that happened during the war, but also other people, other leaders were, and um, they were not, they were, their, their responsibility was not questioned, uh, questioned as much as Milosevic's, and that, that see, Serbs see, see that as unjust, especially Serbs that have lived through that and serve that that feel that they are victims of some people that that whose whose guilt is not even questioned. Yeah, obviously very very different perspectives we're hearing here, and I appreciate Vladan Ivkovic, a Bosnian Serb, uh, who was displaced uh, during the fighting, joining us on the phone from New York. Uh, Mr. Ivkovic, uh, thank you very much for your perspective and your thoughts.